My family was shocked that Candy didn't do anything. They thought I was lying. Sounds like Marlo is trying to amp up an already negative situation that happened to one of my family members. To lying ass bitch. Actually about to shoot that old lady guy. She said incident. Twelve seconds later. But we don't use that word. For all the kids that are on the south side getting killed every day, when you say that, it perpetuates it. So we don't use that word. Girl, bye. Bye. Get out. Get out. What's up, y'all? It's Brian Keith, and I'm back with another video. Today, we're going to be talking about episode six of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. And there was a lot to this episode. Like, mind you, I'm just going to go ahead and say, like, there's some points where I can understand Marlo, and there's some points that is just egregious, and it's a reach. Um, I feel like Candy was absolutely valid throughout everything that she said, but there were some things that I can agree with just being subjective and objective of the situation. I'm not just going to be like, oh my God, I hate Marlo because she's just annoying and do too much. I mean, on these shows, that's what you're supposed to do. So I can be objective with it and just like, you know, even though she's say and do a lot and sometimes it's just too much, but right is right and wrong, wrong, period. But y'all like, comment, and subscribe, and let's get into the video. Yeah. Let me check my check my shit real quick. Hotter than the fire, come out my flame and lips. You wanna play with me? You can't play in me. On the playground, bitch, you can't play with me. Got it, one and securing the bag. Alright, so the episode basically opens up when we see like the flashback of Candy and Marlo's budding beef and how you know Candy opened her own open like brought her in with open arms, you know, was a friend to her, um, all these things talk highly of Marlo. We know the backstory with Marlo. Marlo used to date Candy's brother, I believe, and was damn near about to be related to Candy. <laughs> so they know they've known each other for years and years and years. The flashback shows, you know, Marlo going to Candy, and you know she's telling um, Candy about the situation about, hey, you know, my nephew passed. This and the third, he got shot. Blah blah blah. Woo 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 woo. Cool. So that's where it leads off. First of all, side note. The editors definitely shaded Nini when they did the flashback and they showed <laughs> they showed the flashback of you know all the ladies without Nini. I mean, it's just sad. It just goes to show to, to let people know that Nini's not coming back ever. <laughs> she might can do girls trip and that's a might, but that's just what it is. I don't think she's ever going to come back and it's sad. But I mean, I think that's clear now. You know, Marlo's whole thing was, oh my God, Candy, you didn't do this for my um, nephew. You didn't do that for my nephew. You, you could have done more. But Marlo, when you told her about the situation in that moment, when you're in Candy's house, she was empathetic. She showed you love. She was supportive of you. She apologized. She said, I'm sorry for your loss. You gave her the con condolences. So what else did you want? Do you want monetary things? You, she was like, oh, you should have sent flowers, you should have did this, you should have did that. But Candy said something later on the episode that I thought was, it just made sense. If you had a problem then, two years ago, if you had a problem then, you should have said something then. Or you should have brought it up multiple times that we've seen each other. But you didn't bring it up at all. You waited for something to go, go wrong in my life. Then you want to bring it up and be like, oh, you should have da-da-da. My whole thing with Marlo is I could understand if Marlo was like, you know what, at the end of the day, Candy had a shooting and she don't want to talk about it. And you want to press Candy on that? Girl, cool. Other girls press people on, <laughs> on less. But to then try to incorporate your nephew in like it's Candy, like you're trying to basically make Candy accountable for the reason why your nephew passed or, you know, you're trying to lump Candy into a situation that had nothing to do with her. And I think that's the problem. And that's where it's just like, it, it just like, Candy, like, Marlo, you do too much. Because if you want to just be like, you know, at the end of the day, Candy needs to be held accountable. We need to bring up the stuff that go on in her life. Cool. Bring it up. Cool. And then Candy can make the decision to talk about it or not. Cool. But then to try to put a situation on her, that's where you took a step too far. And it just... Like we get y'all trying to make TV, but you're doing too much. You're you're trying to one degrade. You're calling her question her character into question, basically. And you know, Marla she goes out to lunch with two of her friends. They're having drinks. They're kicking, having a good time. Marla brings up, you know, Courtney. Um, she brings up actually. Um, she's want a date. This and the third. She's like, I'm so nervous about dating, and, and, and you know, it's just weird. What if you feel in my booty? Da da da. And the thing about Marla that it. I feel like Marlo has 
all the potential to be a great housewife, right? Bef when she was a friend of the show, I thought Marla Damon was brilliant. <laughs> the, the way that she could engage, get in and get out, great, right? The thing for me is I feel like Marlo is self-producing herself and trying to make herself seem likable for people. Like she's like, what if you feel my booty? What if you do that? I'm just like, I don't think that's really how Marlo kiki with her with her girls. I don't. So Marlo brings up to her friends, you know, Courtney's gonna have an event, this and third. And she was like, yeah, you know, when we went to um, Alabama, you know, Kenya brought up the whole situation with Drew and Drew was basically twisting my words and try to twist the situation like I'm just so like this villain, right? Full story straight, Drew. Running your mouth the damn Kenya going to Birmingham. Somebody was saying it. It was a fight between Drew and Marlo. She was just very upset. So I understand Marlo's whole gripe. Um, I don't agree, but I understand her whole gripe. Where it's like at the end of the day, you know, people act like you know you can't say stuff to Candy. Things are off limits. This and the third. I want to bring it up. Cool, but like my whole thing is, if Candy didn't do anything negative, she didn't do nothing negative. You can't you want for something to happen if it's not there. It looks like Marlo wants Candy to, and it, it's reminding me of flashback of Nini and you know, how Nini wanted us as a viewer so badly to see Cynthia in this light, and it's just not going to work. At the end of the day, it's like it could be edited, it could not be. Who knows? But it's like when Cynthia went after Marlo and um, what Snake Gate. Um, and basically <laughs> she's like, you see, this is the Cynthia that I know. It still didn't give because it's just like Cynthia was rightfully so angry and it made sense by her retaliating against Marlo. <laughs> right. So, um, Marlo, she's like, you know, I'm just so unaware why I yell. Step in the, and then it, maybe that just triggered what you felt about not being right. acknowledged with Quentin. What did your sister think about that? Oh. Like I said in my last video, Marlo. You yelled at the situation because you wanted a moment with, with Candy. You couldn't get that moment with Candy, so you was already mad at Drew, and you just wanted a moment with Drew. I just wish that Marlo was like, at the end of the day, I got pissed off at Drew because she was over here too scared to bring it up, so I just went off on her. I could have stomached that because it makes sense. I, do I feel like Drew was scared? Yes, I feel like, Drew, if you're going to bring up the situation, just bring it up. No chaser, don't over here sugarcoat it, don't over here just like, up. Oh, no, no. And then the way that Drew's trying to explain it, where where she's like, "Oh, you know, in Chicago, we don't say that. We don't say incident. We don't we don't say shooting. We don't say that." Girl, bye. Girl, <laughs> it missed the mark. <laughs> Just say you were scared. Cool. So Marlo talks about the whole family shock and um, that Candy didn't do more for the family and during that time that the nephew passed. Okay, you're supposed to call my sister. You're supposed to cater with OLG. You're an action person. Like when I was in labor, you were like outside of the hospital like, park it! But like I said with Marlo, it's like, what did you want for Candy to do? Like she, he didn't work for her at the time. She gave you the condolences. She was like, well, you know, Candy could have brought flowers. She could have catered for OLG. Girl, what? You could have asked her. And like Candy said, you should have said something. You didn't say nothing. You act like you was over here talking about cameo and talk about this and the third but you you didn't bring it up so it was just like it, it's weird and it does feel like her bringing this up is very much self-serving to basically get back at candy so marlo's yes men are over here telling her like you know at the end of the day she should have did that should have could have would have did that and blah, blah 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 but at the end of the day you talk about like because marlo <laughs> They try to relate the situation like Marlo is such a good person. When I went into labor, Marlo was there directing traffic, telling them to do this. She's just an action friend. And that's a lot of people's problem. You want to put your, you want to put your, um, how you react to things on other people. You can't hold people accountable for the way that they react to things because you wouldn't react to it. You just have to meet in the middle. As long as there's a mutual respect, then there's a mutual respect. But you can't be like, oh my God, why did she do that? Because I wouldn't do it like that. Exactly. You wouldn't. It doesn't mean they won't. So we basically see Sonya. She's already talking to her sister about Ross wanting to move out. So <laughs> her sister's basically irritated. She's just like, at the end of the day, like, it's, it just brings it up. It's just weird because you have a purpose situation. Like you over here have a built-in nanny. You can go and come as you please, but now y'all want us out. And I mean, like I said before, I really, I get the situation, but if I was a sister, I would want to leave too. Like, I would want to leave, but I get both sides of the situation where it's just like, maybe they weren't ready to leave and they just don't want to talk about like financially, they're probably not ready to leave. But I mean, respectfully, it is Sonya in Ross's house and Sonya does have to take the opinion of her husband into account. But 
that's her family, so she's not, just not gonna throw them on the street. So she gonna have to come to a, some sort of resolution and figure it out because it's already causing disdain and um, strain in her sister and her relationship, right? Um, so we transport over to Sheree and we see her, she's with her daughter Kylie, and Cairo comes in with his, you know, his, the mother of his child, baby mama, and a three month old daughter. They're like over here doing like the print, like, what is it, a molding the hand? Really cute. Um, Sheree's over here getting emotional in her confessional because, you know, she didn't have the support of, if she raised three kids and she sees that Cairo's so hands on and she's just proud that he's really hands on with um, his daughter. Are showing me that he's more than ready to. I'm sorry. Cairo is doing amazing. And you know, it's a beautiful thing. So shout out to them. Um, So we see Drew. She's over here with her family and someone else is sick. I'm just like, <laughs> what is going on? Maybe it's flu season. So cool. But her daughter's sick. And you know, her son's outside playing basketball with a coach. And you know, Ralph's there. Drew, she basically comes over and she pulls um Ralph to the side. She's just talking about the whole situation. How there's an event coming up and you know she's kind of um skeptical but with marlo because marlo um is basically um trying just being very aggressive and this and the third and she was like well you know if marlo starts anything i just might have to um you know square up with her and her husband was like <laughs> he's like square with marlo i don't think that's a good idea you can't take marlo marlo's a big girl <laughs> i'm just like the height difference between marlo and drew <laughs> don't do it girl you know sometimes i mean i've seen i've seen some small scrappy girls you know really get get down and dirty with it but i haven't seen that many I, I remember this um in high school there was a girl um should i say the name was it i think it was ninth grade we would call her isa she was like the biggest girl in our grade and the other girl was Vel. so isa and Vel. So I was cool with Issa. I wasn't really cool with Belle because she went to the other middle school, not the middle school I went from. So when she came, when they came over, they were over here arguing about, I don't know what. But I, was, I went in, I was just, oh my God, Issa, don't do this, don't do da 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 da, you know, trying to stop it. But she was like, if you don't get out of my way, I'm gonna hit you. I said, okay, cool. <laughs> girl, I'm not, I'm not, but you're not gonna hit me. So, girl, go ahead, <laughs> have fun. And Vail, you know, Vail, she was very much like, oh, yeah, what's up? Blah, 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 blah. Just popping, popping, popping off at the mouth. And all I can just say is Issa mopped the flow with Vail. We transfer over to Candy and Todd, and they're talking about basically um, Todd's movie, um, The Past, and how he is trying to get more help from Candy. You know, she's an executive producer, this and third. You know, Candy has um, not as much time as Todd <laughs> um, because, you know, she, Candy's busy. She's just going, doing so many different things. And then, you know, in the middle of it, Candy gets a call from, she calls Kenya. Uh, are you still going to be able to make it to Courtney's event later? She never put her name. And she didn't even tell us that it was an event. And basically asked her like, hey, what are we doing at um, Courtney's part at the Courtney, Courtney's party? Because we need to figure out, like, I need to figure out why I want to wear. So she's talking to Ken Kenya and Kenya's like, yo, so basically you need to, um, um, you need to, um, put some clothes on because like spray paint and like we were pretty, like shooting guns and stuff. So we both. Kenya basically tells, um, Candy about the whole Marlo situation. She was like, "Look, Drew's saying that Kenya, um, Drew's saying that Marlo is over here mad at you about the whole about the nephew, and you not providing flowers, and you not really supporting her, and this that, and the third. And Candy's just like, "Okay, why is Marlo over here starting mess about something that's irrelevant to me?" What? She been around here laughing with me, Kiki, and with me. Never mentioned that. Like, I don't get it. Like, what what's going on? So now Candy's over here on TM because she's just like, okay, so now I'm about to walk into some mess because Marlo's over here starting stuff for no reason. Right. So it's the event. Everybody shows up. All like all ladies are like basically showing up. Marlo sits down and Drew's over here flying shade at her left, left and right. Drew's like, um, <laughs> Marlo comes in. She's like, hey, how are you doing, everyone? Drew's like, no. They're trying to be cordial. Um, but everyone, like before Kenny walks in, everyone's like the energy of everybody's taking drinks, having a good time. It's a really good energy. And I'm just like, okay, cool. Everybody's vibing. Cool, cool, cool. Um, Candy walks in like the Grinch done stole her Christmas. And she just, you could just tell Candy just like, mm -hmm. she's on a mission. She's like, I'm going to get this help. <laughs> so Candy sits down and she hugs everyone, da, da, da. And Sonya's like, Kenny, are you good? Kenny's like, no. 
And you can just tell that like, Candy's just pissed off because, you know, the narrative that um, Marlo's trying to paint, that she that she is basically trying to lump her into a situation about her nephew's death, right? Candy um, sits down, everyone cheers, everyone's having a good time. And then Candy kicks it off with Marlo. She says, Marlo, can I um, talk to you? Cause I heard that you had a lot to say about a situation. I'm just trying to figure out like, how's that pertain with me? So Marlo's like, okay, well, can I speak to you and Drew to the side? And you know, Candy's like, cool, cool, cool. Marlo, I had to ask you a question cause my energy ain't gonna be right till I know. What is this about me and your cousin? No, me, you, and Drew, can we go somewhere and speak? Sure. Mistake number one, Marlo, is you shouldn't have brought Drew over there. Because to be honest, you could have explained the situation to Marlo because Drew was going to explain it regardless to her anyway to fill her up, to fill her, uh, fill her in. But I'm just like, you should not have even brought Drew over. That was mistake number one. So Marlo's asking Candy, she was like, oh, what, what, what was said? Because I'm just confused, like, what was said? Flowers for your cousin or something. My nephew. Remember when we were sitting in the restaurant, she asked you about the shooting at a lady guy. She said, incident. And Candy's like, okay, you're mad at me for not sending flowers to your nephew and this, that, and the third. Like, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. So Marlo's like, okay, you remember when Drew um, was scared to tell you about the whole shooting? <laughs> she was. Marlo was like, okay. And mind you, at this point, I feel like everyone is being, they're being like respectful in the beginning, like letting each other talk, not talking over each other. Like, you know, I felt, I felt like this could have went a different way. Marlo was like, okay, so at the end of the day, like, why is it okay when people bring up my past and the things that I've done in my past over 23 years ago, it's all, it's direct, it's blunt, it's boom, like it's in your face. Nobody holds nothing back. But she was like, but when it brings up to you or anybody else, then they want to soften the blow and sugarcoat it. I don't like that. And um, mind you, that's irrelevant to Candy. If they want to soften the blow, they soften the blow. You need to be mad at them, not Candy. But, you know, Marlo addresses Drew and she was like, okay, you you remember when you were over here sugarcoating um, the whole message? So I came over, I said, Drew, I don't understand when it comes to me, no one sugarcoats anything. It's just sad. Then Marlo brings up, um, you know, two years ago, we came to your house and we talked about my nephew's death and Candy, you know, like I said, she showed empathy. She showed love to Marlo. So I'm trying to figure out what's the deal. Um, mind you, at this point, I feel like both sides, like I said, they were conversing very respectfully. And, you know, Candy let her talk. Marla was mute when Candy talked. They did do a little bit of over-talking, but it wasn't too much at this point. Um, Marla then says, <laughs> at your house two years ago, um, you, did, you didn't even basically want to deal with it. And that's just what pissed me off because you didn't want to deal with the death of my nephew. Candy's like, okay, so why would I want to deal? Like, what are you talking about? Like, why, why would I want to deal with it? This is when it started getting hyped. <laughs> Kenny's like, okay, you're trying to attach your nephew shooting to me, and that has nothing to do with me. And like I said, at this point, Marietta, she walks over. I don't know why Marietta even got up, because Marietta, then when she came back to sit down, she's like, yeah, you know, it's just too hostile for me. I mean, what do you think was going to happen? So as Kenny's talking, she's starting to say facts, and she did say, like, yeah, you know, Quentin, he did work for me, but at the time of the shooting, he wasn't working for me for a couple months, so I don't know what you're trying to get at. He no longer work with us. So I don't understand why you running it back to her as if his shooting had some. So Marlo's like, okay, well, he met the guy there with you. And she's like, she, he met the guy there uh, at your restaurant. And Kenny was like, no, that's a lie. Um, she was like, no, he was a patron or something. She was like, okay, cool, but he didn't work there. So don't make it seem like they both worked to, there together. So, you know. I do feel like Marlo is reaching. And I feel like if she never would have brought the whole nephew situation in, it would have been a. It still would have been like a beef, but it wouldn't have made her seem like <coughs> it would. Have, I could have understand it more if she would have brought the nephew up because I'm just like, what does that got to do with Candy? So um, basically, while Candy's talking, Marlo's like, okay, well, can I talk? And Drew's like, no, it's my turn to talk. And now Drew's trying to interject. Mayetta, she walks back, like I said. And at this point, both sides are starting to get it started getting elevated, a little heated. Marlo then she starts poking and poking and poking at Candy. And she's basically like, at the end of the day, I'm just, um, I just feel like that's like a character flaw for you. That's what you messed up. <laughs> because Candy's like, a, char a character? Like, how are you gonna try to call my character into something that has nothing to do with, with the situation? Marlo is yelling back and she's like, okay, at the end of the day, y'all bring up stuff from 23 years ago about me, so I can bring up something about um that um that happened two years ago. Um, that pertains on um, with you but it doesn't like I said if 
that the logic that Marla just had, it made sense, but then it didn't. Because like when she said, y'all bring up stuff that happened 23 years ago about me, I could bring up something about two years ago. Cool, that's fine. Logically, makes sense. But you can't bring up the your nephew because it it has nothing to do with candy. I'm gonna tell you. Oh, wait a minute, hold on. Yeah. Look at me. Candy started clapping and clapping, 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 clapping. Marlo matches the energy, start clapping. And low key, I do feel like Marlo has been antagonistic to Candy, but who heightened the situation? It was definitely Candy. You just gotta be honest. Candy did take it to the next step, but I do feel like Marlo was poking and poking and poking, right? And I feel like it's just like what they do to Candace. I feel like a lot of people bait Candace and Candace fall right for it. The other girls see and they come over. And Candy, <laughs> Candy said, if you had a problem, you should have said something in the moment, but you didn't even say nothing. You brought wait till two years. Bingo. And Kenya comes over. She's trying to um hold Candy. <laughs> she's trying to hold Candy, push her back. <laughs> and um Candy's like, look, if she start, if she pop off, don't hold me. Don't hold me. If she pop off, don't hold me. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. If she pop off, do not grab me. Do not, not grab me. I'm gonna. I know that's right. <laughs> so Candy was like, no, 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 no. Cause Marlo was like, you should have sent flowers. You should have did something. You didn't do nothing. And I'm just like, Marlo, girl, she don't have to do anything. And that's the part that Marlo don't fail to see. Mar Candy don't have to do shit. Candy could have literally sat back, said, girl, I'm sorry for your condolences and kept it cool. Candy did as much as she needed to do. And if you wanted more, you should have spoke that up, right? So, um, Drew pops up and she's like, see, she's so aggressive. She's so aggressive. Oh my God. She's so aggressive. And Marlo does a lot, right? But in this moment, we can't say that Marlo was aggressive. If we said that Marlo was aggressive, then Candy was aggressive too. Marlo literally had her hands on her hips and she was just talking. It's just one of those things where it's like she i do feel like marlo is verbally abusive we could say that but marlo literally was standing there and saying what she had to say she didn't try to fight she didn't try to push she didn't try to shove through she literally was just standing there so we can't sit here and say that she was aggressive when she wasn't so i feel like that is perpetuating a stereotype drew Marlo, she attacked me and was being very aggressive. Kenny, um, then she was like, yeah, you a fake ass boo. Blah, 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 blah. Like going, they over here, they both go over here throwing out slugs, throwing out um, insults. Marlo's over here mocking Kenny like, Yo, you gonna cry, you gonna cry. Antagonize it, right? Um, Kenny's like, the only reason I ain't, the only reason I'm crying is I can't chuck your ass. You're a fake ass. No, your character is all Don't cry now. The only reason I'm crying right now is because I can't choke your ass, bitch. But... <laughs> They didn't pull Candy outside, and it's Candy, Marlo, it's Candy, Kenya, Moneta, and Drew. They go outside. Candy brings up the way, um, she's like, yeah, you know, she want to talk about something that happened two years ago. Okay, what about all that stuff that happened um, when you sliced that girl in the face, when you went to jail, got a mugshot, what about that? And the way the editors shaded Candy, y'all ain't right <laughs> at all. So Marlo's inside talking to, um, talking about candy always wants to be in the best light but marla had to realize that we've seen candy in this on this show ups and downs through and through her mama over here coming after her marriage kim and her over here going through a whole battle of, over a song and candy losing the deterioration with her friendship with P phaedra the beef that she had with portia the beef that she had with nini the beef that she had with sheree the beef that she had with old girl um, when she was saying that Taz an opportunist, Candy has been through so much, many things on this show. Like, we can't sit here and say that, oh my God, y'all trying to make it seem like what Candy in, in a bad light. In a, I'm just like, Candy has been through so many ups and downs on the show. Like, what are we talking about? So there has been seasons where I do feel like after Phaedra left, I do feel like Candy did take a back seat and Candy was chilling. But these last couple seasons, Candy has been really doing what she had to do. Amen. <laughs> Um, so Marlo's basically, um, Drew's in her confession, like, Marlo's so aggressive, she's over here trying to fight Candy, and I'm just so irritated with Drew at this point. Drew has fought, fell into my, the, the bottom spot. I'm over Drew, because you over here talking about, oh, in Chicago, we don't say, we don't say that word, we don't say that word, because it's perpetuating a stereotype where all these young kids getting shot, it's perpetuating a stereotype. Every day, when you say that, it perpetuates it, so we don't use that word. Um... Okay, but you just perpetuated a stereotype and you want to talk about people 
shooting or not saying shooting because it perpetuates stereotype. I mean, sad to say, but pe it's still going to happen regardless of you said it or not. So it, it, she just irritates me. But we can clearly see that there is a um, division happening, right? Uh, it's basically um, Marlo, Sanya, Sheree, Courtney, King, Candy, Kenya, Mayetta, Drew. And, you know, at this point, we got to see where it's going to go. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's been happening. Um, like I said, I've been enjoying Atlanta. There has been, I think the Birmingham episode really was not it for me. I was over it. Um, but I do feel like this episode brought me back into it. Let me know what you guys think of the video. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.